Bitter Creek is uh, so full of minerals and salts from, well, it's a mining area, of course, it's right down here. But in the summertime, there can be salt crystals standing up five, six inches high on the rocks from water evaporating of the salt crystals. It's the most bizarre thing you ever see. And it's over rhyolite bedrock here, and this is a creek right here. But the uh, Forest Service maintains a watering hole for animals right around here too. That's why they don't want you camping anywhere around here, which makes sense, I guess. Here's a shell creek, and I've heard there's gold in it. Man, I put some time into hunting this thing with both metal detector, and I did a little pan and found a couple flakes. But I never found anything in the way of gold I'd come back and hunt for in earnest. Let me cover this piece of concrete because it gets flowing pretty good sometimes. It'll, uh, it washes out pretty bad. You don't want to go through these things when it's raining or even get back in here when it's fixing to rain. And if you're like me, and I carry a firebox stove, which is a really cool old gizmo. I'll show you one of these days again. And I carry uh, freeze-dried meals. I carry coffee. I carry all the stuff I might need if I get stranded back here for a couple days. Uh, gee, Bill, why would you carry that stuff? Well, because in all my infinite desert wisdom, I have been stranded for a couple days. So, there you go. And I managed to get out, and wasn't that big a deal. But I was stranded for a couple days and couldn't go home because the wash was flowing. And when the wash is flowing, you try to drive across it because you're in a hurry to get home, you may never get home. But they uh, did some poking around in this, these rattle contact zones around here. I'm sure they found a little bit of gold. So just look at some of this stuff. It's pretty, not much of a road here, it's pretty tight. So. And you got water seeping right out of the rock. Isn't that cool? The water gets down in the cracks of them rocks and it stays there. And throughout the year it seeps out making springs. And there's a lot of this type of stuff in the desert. And if a fellow knows enough about the desert, um, he also knows there's quite a bit of water in the desert. So for everybody that thinks you go out in the desert, you're gonna die of thirst. Well, if you're a greenhorn and you don't know where to look for water out here, yeah, there's a good chance that may happen. But if you actually know where to look for water in the desert, there's water in the desert, trust me. Just a little bit bumpy and grumpy, isn't it? <sighs> Quite a bit of water, but like I said, we had a couple inches of rain over the last few days. So. Roads are still pretty wet from that. Like I said, this is way more than a one-part video. There's a five-mile stretch here that is just really awesome. And if you're into nature and seeing the beauty of the Sonoran Desert, well, here you go, my friends. Let me share this one. I think I already mentioned it, but in most places, unless there's a sign telling you, you're on BLM land here. Unless it tells you it's private or otherwise. And yeah, you can camp here. You know, don't leave evidence of yourself and make sure you bury what needs buried. And uh, looky right there's a claim marker. Right there's a claim marker, and it's a Roadrunner claim marker. <laughs> Right off to my left. Looky there. That's a claim marker, my friends. And that belongs to the Roadrunners Prospecting Club. A club I'm a member of. 
And I'm gonna have to remember to come back here and take a better look at that soon. I am. Dial marker 15. Now we're still a cruising. And it's not as rugged as you can see now. The hills are a little older and worn down a little more. I should say mountains. We call what some people call mountains hills around here. <laughs> Uh, and I didn't realize there was a club plane back in here that I could work. I have to come back and sniff around a little back in here, by golly. And that's just what I'm going to do. So, I got the information off the claim post. And I'll see if I can look it up in my paperwork when I get back. Now we're getting back down into a little bit lower ground here. We're not quite up going over the top of the mountain anymore. But you notice how many swirl cactus and other cactus are growing in these areas back in here. Because they just they haven't been abused by humans. And a lot of the desert you see along the highway where you're driving through Arizona is a real Arizona desert. It's the Arizona desert that everybody and their brother is taken pictures of it, gone to, and looked at, and walked on, and thrown bottles in, whatever. Here's another road to a mine right here, and there's another corral right up here, too. I can't even remember the name of that mine. I've been up there before. I don't think it was a gold mine. Corral back in there. Okay, yeah, now we're gonna go back up and get some more rugged ground. And I don't Probably you probably noticed there's signs on the road showing a picture of a cow on them. Well, with that yellow sign on the picture of a cow on it means this is open range. And if you hit a cow on open range, <laughs> you owe that rancher for that cow. And most times you don't even get to keep the meat. So just be careful driving like a fool out here. There's a piece of somebody's car. Come up over around this hill, we're gonna get a pretty nice view. Boy, that dreaded red mud. Don't want to drive in it when it's slick. Trust me on that. That'll even take you down in one of those your TVs. Stuff gets on your tires, you just got no tread. This is all well, well marked along here. And all this marking means stay out. You're not welcome to this private property. And this is real slick right now. Look at me. I'm not four wheel drive right now, so we're sliding around just a little bit. Let's see if we make it two wheel drive. I have to put it in four wheel drive. Nope, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. Uh, we're going to make it. I think I will go into four-wheel drive, though, just for grins. Okay. Okay, now we're in four-wheel drive. So we go through the water. But there's a ranch down there, and they don't care much to have company. Check out this view. Isn't that something? Now we're going to be see, able to see Lake Pleasant pretty soon. I'm surprised there's not snow on the mountain still. 
And that there's a great big cattle pond. And you see how dry it is. Usually that thing's full. We're pretty close to full from all the rain we get in the spring. And it's just not got a lot of water in it. It just does not. And water's the number one thing out here for these ranchers. You don't have water and the cows aren't gonna make it. And this road's real slick. I'm glad I'm going back on the pavement. Well, at least you got to see what that was like, boy. Even this big old Chevy truck was having trouble getting through that mud until I put it in four-wheel drive. It's windy. Look at that view, huh? Up here comes somebody on a machine. I'm going to shut off for a minute. I generally let them people just go right on by. There's a good reason for that. I, have, uh, I had one running right inside my truck a little bit once. They don't drive real well sometimes. They get showing off and spinning around. Tammy and I had some got so rude and they got so close to us, they almost ran us off the road and hit us. And uh, I don't know. So I'd be a little careful when I'm around them. In fact, anybody can go into one of them places and buy one. Doesn't mean you know how to drive it, I suppose. Look at the saguaros out there. Look at that canyon. Mm. That's really something, isn't it? That canyon down there. Yeah. Good old Arizona. This is the cattle guard. And I suppose there's places where people don't know what a cattle guard is. They go like that and what that does cattle don't like walking over anything very big they can't see through <laughs> or I mean they can see through I'm sorry and uh, if it's got those openings there they're scared they're scared to walk across those so it's just like having a fence up across the road I to wash a truck going home Look at that view out there. Ooh, wee. Now you see the swirls from the top. That's not a treat too many people get. Pretty lucky you get to live here. And now we're at mile marker 17. They all got bullet holes in them around here. It's hard to find a sign anywhere out in the country. It's been, been shot three or four times. Here comes our view. at that. That is some of the best stuff we got to offer in this good state of ours. Some of it. I got a lot of it, but that's some of it right there. Isn't that pretty? If you drive off the edge of this, you'd be in a smidgen of trouble, I'd say, my friends. Back in a minute. Well, I had to take a short little break, have something to drink, and the battery was all showing yellow, so that meant it was about to die. And we're back on the road again. And this is the road I've always wanted to go down and look at those mountains, but. Ah, it's just private property, and I don't know this rancher, so I haven't been able to get a shot at getting back there, but maybe I'll talk to Jeff about it. It's a big area of private property in here. Some of these ranch holdings are huge. Bitter Creek Lane.
going down again. There's some more of that yummy red slick mud. You don't want to hit that on a slopey road like this and slide off into the <laughs> ditch below. It's best just not even to hit the brakes if you don't have to. Now we're coming up to Lake Pleasant and another little surprise. And Arizona's got a lot of them. Surprises that is. And back, I believe, uh, what was a year? Uh, let me look here. I got 18, 1860s, I don't know, 1865. There was uh, the Indians. Uh, massacred some soldiers up here and a troop came out of Prescott's Fort Whipple looking for these Indians and they found them and they did what they did to Indians back then that, during the Indian Wars but anyway they also discovered a hot spring and they named the area around it because of the way the rocks look um, Castle Mountains which are right up ahead here and that led to the name of the spring as Castle Hot Spring. Well, this water is 120 degrees coming out of there. Perfect for like soaking in and it supposedly has medicinal powers and, and whatever else benefits you get from a hot spring, natural salts and whatnot. And they made it into a resort. Well, that resort bloomed, which was once um, Castle Hot Springs Station into Morristown, a town. And then they would take people out here on a stage. And even Teddy Roosevelt came out here and stayed quite often. And they'd hang out out here at the at the hot spring and enjoy themselves. And it's down at the bottom of this hill on Castle Creek. So we got a little ways to go to it yet. And I'll leave the camera on just because I'm gonna make this into a more than one part show and I'm going to leave as much of it as I can in, just because of the beauty of the area. Just blows my mind here. Every time I come down here, it looks a little bit different to me. Um, just amazing area. And we're coming up in a milepost marker, and that's probably going to be I think up to 18 or 19 now, aren't we? They sort of maintain these roads, like I said, but you have no business on here in a car or a vehicle that doesn't have four-wheel drive if these roads are wet and muddy. And right now, it'd probably be okay, but I think I'd wait a day. Because if you screw up, nobody's going to come along to save you in a while. And there's no cell phone reception out here, trust me on that. <laughs> You're not going to be calling anybody up. Unless you climb up on one of these mountains, you're probably going to get a pretty good signal. I'm surprised we haven't seen deer or anything yet. Isn't that something? And yeah, we just got miles and miles of this public land in Arizona to look at, hang out on, and recreation. I think it's a, one of the biggest reasons I live here. In a lot of places back east, it's so sad you can't even go to a creek and pan because everything's on private property. Everything's owned. Somebody owns every square inch of everything. It just so happens a lot of this land up here, nobody thinks it's worth anything, so nobody owns it. It's public land. And around we come and back down the hill. And I'll see you again in a minute. They mean that, do not cross when flooded. Otherwise your car might end up somewhere down near Phoenix. It's amazing how many people don't pay attention. I got a four wheel drive, I'll make it. Boy, God. And off they go and then, well, a lot of it ends very sadly. Very sadly indeed. And we're still moving along. And we got some nice views coming up. I'll be back. Well, I'll leave this one on. I see the mud flying off the wheels every now and then. 
saw a white truck up here somewhere. I don't know where it went. Yeah, I'll be back. noise you heard was a branch ripping paint off the side of the truck. Just you just got him. You'd be mind blown if you've ever seen any of this before in your life. You know it's one thing to watch those nature documentaries and stuff and it's another thing just watch some old guy drive around out in the out in the desert and show a video and get to see the real thing. Look at there. Pretty soon we're gonna come over one of these hills and you're gonna see Lake Pleasant. That's a hot springs just right up the way here. We're at mile marker 19 now. Now you think about it. In your little warm trousers and bib overalls and all that stuff they wore and the women wearing them big old fluffy dresses riding in a stagecoach more than 20 miles back to a resort. Having stopped at least twice to get water. <laughs> Animals didn't die. Now, I don't know what's up on that hill or what they're building there or we're going to build or I don't know, it's been like that a long, long time. So, it's private property and I don't think anybody does much with it. It looks like they're going to build something at one time or something was built at one time. It's hard to say without trespassing and going up and looking, which I don't care to do, but they do have a snowman on the fence. <laughs> so you can't be all bad, right? Actually there. Private property. I bet there's a house or something up there. Yeah, I bet there is. That's probably just an old building from back when. And there probably is a house up there. I don't know. Probably never will. Yeah, we got her up to 17 miles an hour now. We're moving. We don't get much over 30 anymore up here. <laughs> going 30, taking a risk. I think I was on those buggies and uh, SUVs and stuff. Boy, they come through here 60 miles an hour, so we start going sideways. A lot of them get hurt up here, too. But I don't suppose that surprises you any. Pleasant is over there to our right. We'll be pointed at it in a minute, but we won't see it just yet. I think this is probably one of my favorite back road drives. It actually goes from pavement to pavement, so I don't have to drive back on the gravel road I drove in on. Because sometimes that can be a bit tedious, but it takes an uh, hour or so or a little better to go this 30 miles or so that we go. And I like this drive because I can hop right on the 74 and be home in 20 minutes. And you can see up there where they had a road running along up there. Now, I'm not sure if it was for the power company or what, but there are power lines up there, too. Roads always catch my eye for obvious reasons. Back in the day, nobody put a road in for no reason, not like now where everybody puts it in for no reason at all. Yeah. 
Now we're back in some country I like, it's kind of worth looking around for gold. I mean, you start seeing more roads going off too. And, uh, Castle Creek up here is known for gold. <laughs> Funny story, some guys put a dredge on Castle Creek up here. Maybe it was on Buckhorn Creek. It might have been on Buckhorn Creek. But they put a dredge up there, a more modern one, made out of big barrels and whatnot. And they were going to dredge during the rainy season. Well, by golly, it rained all right. And uh, their dredge ended up about four or five miles down the, the wash. So that project never got going. That dredge is still sitting there. Still is. This is private property up here to the left, too. So you can't go up there. But yeah, that's just one of those stories. I got pictures of me standing on it somewhere. I took a long time ago. I can't remember even where they're at. Back in them days, we didn't have cameras that saved pictures online. So, most pictures ended up rotting away or getting wet and ruined or whatever. Of course, they'll really be gone when the digital age ends, won't they? If it ends. Now 20. Da 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 da. And once again, the terrain changes drastically here. Now we're more into volcanic materials, basalts, volcanic plugs. And then over there, you can't see it on the camera, there's a Another road that goes down, that's not a private road, and that goes down into an area. There is some gold down there. I've never found any, but there is. Yeah, another invisible cattle fence. We're playing mud. That's on the windshield again. I guess you're getting used to it. We got a corral ahead. I'm gonna have to get out, clean the window again in here, I think. We have an energy bar to eat. Looks like a safe place to pull off and do just so. These old corrals don't look much different than they did back in the day. They backed the mule team up to that old uh, the doorway there and the corral. Over there to your right. They just back right up there and load them up. And they still do it that way today, except they do it with uh, semis. Anyway, I'm gonna take a little break. Okay, here we go. I got an energy bar, energy drink. And we're gonna continue on our journey. I remember riding this in stagecoach. <laughs> Just cleaned the window and I was going to get muddy again. Wow. All the arms twisted in all directions. Yeah, I'm talking about my mouthful. Still be there when I'm gone, I'm betting.
Wow, man, I saw this guy four wheeling in Arizona in the mud. <laughs> if I'm gonna believe it. They don't have mud in Arizona. Yeah, we do. That was it. Oh, that's these. Now, some of, the long, some of these washes. Let me back up here, if I don't. Here behind me. You watch for stuff like this. Because. This spot right over here. Muddy window down. This spot right over here. They uh, threw that out by hand. And they were probably checking for gold a long, long time ago. Who knows? But I look for stuff like that. And that clues me in on a place to stop and maybe look around and hunt just a little bit. Well, tips along the way. Whoopee whoopee, huh? But anyway, look for stuff that's uh, just not right. Just notice like it's been disturbed. Nothing else, you'll find something cool. Right? <laughs>